Welcome team, uh, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of ICQB Foundation examination. So this, this is the uh, third tutorial about ICQB Foundation examination. Here we'll be moving into the third topic of uh, first chapter fundamentals of testing where the third topic is about seven testing principles. Now we do have some standard principles which are involved with uh, testing which uh, we need to understand. Also, we need to prepare for it. So basically, uh, we need to be aware of understanding uh, created by seven testing principles and also be uh, remembering them towards the examination point of view. So let's quickly look into the seven standard principles of testing. So here, uh, just knowing the principle would really help you in understanding of that. So it's at K2 level. So let's look at the very first principle. Uh, we have got uh, altogether seven principles, like the principle one, testing shows presence of defects. Principle two, exhaustive testing is impossible. Principle three, as an early testing. Principle four, defect clustering. Principle five, as pesticide paradox. Principle six, testing is context dependent, whereas principle seven is absence of error fallacy. So these seven principles basically help you implement testing at the best way and also help you understand that how these principles play a vital role when you talk about uh, testing the any kind of application or something. So let's move into each principle and understand in more detail that how these principles can help you reflect. So commonly you will be basically practicing all these principles by now, but just being aligned with these standard and certification syllabus would be more helpful for you. So the first principle says testing shows presence of defects, which at any point of time means that testing is a process so which helps a test engineer to find defects. So when you write test cases and execute them, that point of time you basically help uh, finding out the defects in the system to improve the quality of the system. But uh, this principle also means to say that no matter you would have found a number of defects at any point of time, it does not mean that the system does not have any more defects in the system. Because if you go on testing, there is a lot of possibility that you may find. Subjected, you uncover those areas. If you have not explored those areas, you have not written those number of test cases which help them help you to explore them, then Obviously, being a test engineer as well, you cannot make such a statement that there are no more defects hereafter. Because a system can never be 100% tested, we agree that. But obviously, at that point of time, you can also not make the statement that it is 100% tested and there are no more defects which you can find. And even like no defects, in case you run some test cases and uh, you fail to find any kind of defect, then it's not a proof of correctness. So say, for example, you would have written a thousand number of test cases to test an application, and uh, maybe all thousands of test cases passes. You know, you can say that it's quite unfortunate moment for you when where all your thousand number of test cases have been executed and all of them have passed. But you cannot say being a good test engineer that it's a really correct application because you know that there's a possibly uh, certain areas which you could not explore or maybe your test data was not good enough to find the defects. So yeah, at the end, concluding, testing shows presence of defects, but does not say at any point of time that there are no more defects. The principle two basically says about exhaustive testing is impossible. So let's talk about what exactly ISTQB says about ex exhaustive testing. I'm sorry, exhaustive testing. So exhaustive testing is all about trying with all possible combinations and permutations of the data or input on the application. So let's take a quick example here. Like for example, you want to try a test a login page and then you have username and password, two fields there. Then you can possibly try with uh, two different set of data for each one of them like valid, 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 invalid, or invalid for username and valid for password, or both invalid. Now, uh, when you say these things, uh, I've got four number of test cases here. And uh, when you look into more details, the invalid probability could be more, where you try with certain more than different than characters, or you know, alphanumeric values, special characters, combination of these, of uh, space. Then if you 
basically come out with the combinations uh, of these inputs, it might be a lot of values which cannot be written, first of all. Even if you succeed writing these test cases to a certain extent, then it's quite impossible, unrealistic to be executed within the given schedule. Yeah, you can go for it. You know, you, you can always try for these kind of things, but you do not have a time scale for such things. So when you are working under a defined schedule, then it's not recommended that you perform exhaustive testing, which is practically also quite impossible because no matter you prepare a million test cases to test a particular application, but at the end of the day, the principle one follows where you say that at any point of time, you cannot say that there are no more defects. So it's an endless journey which you will be traveling on. So, yeah, but then what do we do at this point of time when we don't try with all possible combinations? There are a lot of things to help you. Uh, one thing is like the test case design techniques which help you to minimize your test cases and maximize coverage. Also, there are like uh, risk analysis reports which can help you to prioritize your test cases in the given uh, period of time to execute them and also, you know, get the efficient coverage. Beyond that, the next principle is about early testing. Early testing basically deals with the uh, uh, involving testers and at, at an early stage. So uh, the previous tutorial, basically we spoke about how, how testers can contribute to the entire development lifecycle model being uh, present as a part of review by conducting reviews on certain documentations and help them understand plus prevent defects being to be being introduced in the system. So that's where early testing comes into picture where we recommend or say that uh, testers must must be install, uh, involved in a development lifecycle model as early as possible. Now, when you say, what do you mean by as early as possible? That's basically as soon as the drafts are available for the documents, not even the finalized copy. So when you get the very first draft of it, you start uh, involving testers or other team, other stakeholders to review the documents so that if there are corrections required, that first draft can be considered for any for further corrections and other things. And yes, testers are basically considered as good reviewers and they contribute from the perspective of meeting the goals of testing. Also, it helps them to prepare test cases earlier in the life cycle model. The next one, the fourth one, is defect clustering. It it is also said that it's not mandatory that you find all the time the defects being distributed among the modules. So say, for example, you're testing 10 different modules and uh, uh, you cannot just expect that there are five module, five defects in each module and you get altogether 50 defects. It's also possible to a certain extent that all the defects would have gathered at one module or you know, putting it all together like maybe first nine modules, you don't get any defect and the 10th module, you get 50 defects altogether in one module. So considering these kind of probabilities, uh, we are basically considering this principle or created this principle that at any point of time, a tester must not uh, keep a perception about the previous uh, module execution that if in case previous uh, complex module or the critical module didn't have any defect, then even the uh, upcoming smaller modules will not have any defect, which basically uh, creates a loophole in the finding defects and effectiveness of testing. So a tester must test every individual module irrespective of the criticality, irrespective of the sizes and other things. But yeah, at the same point of time, when you see there are like uh, smaller modules having more defects, then the proportional number of test cases are supposed to be created to explore them further beyond that and uh, uncover all those defects, what you can expect. So. So at the end, defect clustering basically means that it's not mandatory that uh, the defects are basically distributed among the module. It's also possible that they would have clustered together in smaller modules rather than getting distributed among bigger modules. Pesticide paradox uh, is basically a term which is used uh, for this belief system where you think you are going right. So it was basically taken from the agriculturist domain where the farmers were uh, using enough number of pesticide again and again, which uh, turned to be the uh, field being uh, infertile 
and was not able to grow any kind of crop for you know maybe another few years because of enough quantity of pesticide being used back to back for every single year for different crops but here what we say is the same concept but in terms of uh, testing that maybe you would have written certain good number of test cases and when you executed them unfortunately or fortunately you didn't get any defects so it's not mandatory that the module doesn't have defect or your test cases were like uh, your efficiency is being cushioned that you could not find any defect it's also possible that your test cases are not strong enough or the test data what you're trying to use is not uh, so specific that it may find a defect or also the extreme condition is also that that uh, the test cases what you're trying with may be working fine so it doesn't mean that there are no defects so instead of like taking a permission from the manager that uh, these test cases are crucial and i would like to repeat it again to make sure that i'm not missing any defects here then repeating it again and again is basically uh, not professional or like say against the testing principles they say that in case you think that if you have executed a particular test suite and uh, this this does not help you to uh uncover any defect then it's possible that your test cases are not good enough then the next step what you can take is at certain point of time you uh consider revising and reviewing your test cases updating your test cases and then hitting the module again so putting it all together basically you don't uh seek permissions to rerun the same set of test cases again 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 and again to find out uh, defects in case they are not able to help you instead of repeating those test cases try revising them upgrading them updating them with new number of test cases or new test data and then hit the module again because it's possible that your test cases are not good enough to find the defects testing is context dependent yeah it's quite simple to understand that subject matter is like the content or the uh, domain specific you do not test two different applications with the same approach now when you talk about that i can quickly give you an example here like a safety critical system is not tested how you test a safe you know e-commerce website so obviously there's a different approach you know that there are a lot of standards employed involved there are a lot of uh, standards involved there are a lot of regulatory acts involved and obviously a aerospace application is not built or not tested the way you test a shopping cart so there the you know involvement is quite different here people are involved with their lives here okay fine the goods are involved with certain amount of money but it's not specifically that okay fine we are you know can go ahead with the same approach because you are creating a cushion in the market that okay uh, you are securing the lives you are giving the confidence to the end user out there that uh, the product which will be released by us will be uh, reliable and uh, trustable so at this point of time considering this you know we have different approaches to test different uh, projects and different applications so obviously you basically create something called as a test strategy which is unique for each project test strategy is a project specific document where each project has a unique test strategy written for it and you follow the the unique strategies created throughout the project for each project so that's where we say it as testing is context dependent what type of project are you making depending on that your testing basically follows last but not the least we have the seventh uh, principle here called as absence of error fallacy where this term is uh, you know stands for itself where it says that at the end no matter you follow all the principles you would have tested a lot of defects and you would have fixed them but in case it doesn't meet the requirement because the primary objective of testing is also to make sure that you are fulfilling the requirements and the customer needs which you started with so finding and fixing defects does not help if the system built uh does not fulfill the user's need and expectations so you basically started with a process of validation where you also make sure that the requirements are being met while you are finding the defects so finding the defects basically help you to improve the quality of the system uh, you know making it defect free but at the same point of time does not mean that you deliver something which was against the requirement or does not fulfill the requirement at all so that's where uh, you know we say uh, the at the end 
uh, absence of error fallacy is also equally important and uh, fulfill the need of the customer. So exactly like everything put together, we have uh, all these things and uh, everything was uh, clear here for all of you. If in case you have any queries, you can uh, put across to uh, understand that uh, in the module was clear to you. In case you have any other queries, you can comment in the box there. Uh, do not forget to subscribe in, to the channel if in case you have not done so as of now. Uh, do click the bell icon, which helps you to get the quick updates or latest notifications about the new videos on the same tutorial and any other tutorial. And stay tuned for upcoming videos on this series. Uh, happy learning till then. Take care. Bye-bye.